I don't own a workshop, so let's make one. It snowed last night. I should probably explain what we're going to be making. Right side drill bit, you can just take a nail that you're going to... Alright, for the past year or so, I've been watching videos like this. That's Izzy Swan. He does DIY woodworking th stuff. And I've always wanted my own workshop, but I figured it would cost a couple thousand dollars for the equipment to get it started. So I figured out how to do it for really cheap. Which brings me to this. This is a major drill. It is a combo. That's interchangeable heads. Drill. Jigsaw. An impact driver. Oscillating tool. Quarter inch router. And, and a finishing tool. This is a circular saw. We're going to use all of this to make a table saw, a table router, a table jigsaw. It should save us about six hundred dollars. You're gonna need a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, it'll be in the description below, and I'll make a blog post on the website about it. say, uh, this is my first time walking around a store with a camera to my face. Never done a vlog. It's very awkward. Everybody's staring at me. Now when buying wood, there's three grades that you can get usually. Standard, quality, and select. If you're doing something really precision like what we're doing with the uh, circular saw guide get select because it's cut straight now when buying four by eight sheets of uh, wood there's a lot to select from what you want to get is if you're doing something that's got to be a lot of wear and tear or holding heavy things you want to go with a uh, Baltic birch plywood the more plies the better and um, I'm going with a BB finish, which is the best you can get for Baltic Birch, but I'm also making YouTube videos. You don't have to get that good of a finish if uh, you don't care the way it looks. Alright, 
so I've already messed up. I can't get my clamp in here because this board is too tall. Now I could do it right here, but then I wouldn't be able to get my circle saw past the clamp and I can't do it over here. So I'm gonna show you a uh, little trick with a cantilever. This is tear out because I didn't tape it down. Three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch. Amazon. Oh, now it comes in. This allows you to cut straight lines with the circle saw. This would have been nice yesterday. I'm just gonna watch a video. Okay, this isn't gonna work. Um, no, I could make it work, but if I put bolts through these holes, you can see that there's not a whole lot of material right here uh, to hold it onto, and it would just be flimsy and I wouldn't trust it. So instead, I'm going to cut this profile out of the acrylic. I'm just going to weld this to the plexiglass, or to the acrylic, and, and Dustin's here. Uh, he's an electrician, he's gonna help me with some of this stuff. Been friends with him since like fourth grade. Alright, this is a perfect fit. Now I'm just gonna cut out some uh, reinforcement pieces to put right here and then weld it.
So with wood glue, the way it works is wood is porous. So when the glue goes in onto it, it actually soaks into the wood and then hardens and that's what creates the bond. Um, epoxy works a little different. It has two main functions. It creates a chemical bond, which actually melts to the uh, material that you're welding it to, and the mechanical bond is similar to wood glue once it hardens. What we're gonna do is take some sanding paper and scrape up the acrylic so that it gets a good mechanical bond along with the chemical bond. go really slow. The things that destroy tips quickest is heat. That's why CNC machines use cooling through the uh, drill bits. I know I see a lot of people use WD-40, but it's not actually good for your bits in the long run. I mean, it works, but get cutting well. It works way better.
finish it off with some beeswax to make it slick and then we still have to make a fence for it so that we can cut boards straight um, but that'll be another video for another time. Tomorrow I'm going to be buying a 3D design software and telling you a few things that you should think about if you're going to be getting into 3D design and I'm going to be designing a stainless steel cover that goes over a die cast machine. shop and if you don't know what that is it's pretty much the shops that make anything you've ever owned um, anything that's mass produced is probably made in a shop like you'll see tomorrow on top of that uh, hopefully later on this week we'll be going to Indy to a brass and aluminum foundry that's the owner has designed his own LSX block and if you don't know what that is this, this is an LSX engine but this YouTube channel isn't just going to be you know building a workshop. I'm going to be traveling around and showing you the industrial side of how things are made on top of trying to do it in my garage. My job for the past couple years has actually been a green sand pattern maker. Uh, this is a 15 pound hammer that is the first pattern that I ever made actually about six or seven years ago. It was made by this. This is a ABS printed plastic uh, pattern that was super glued onto a wood board and this makes a mold which makes the aluminum casting that you see right there. So that's about it. For people because I'm always about depth versus width. Do you want to go wide or do you want to go deep? I want to go deeper with my community. I want to give side curves. And this is where the coolest feature of the strip sander comes in. I want to be a part of it. New York. <laughs> It's my need, but it's a space saver. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators, and let's make this build happen. Voila, it was working. The plan is to actually mark the other board too, because if they're stacked together and I try to coats, I ran over it with a really high grit sandpaper just to knock off the raised grain. Like I said before, you can